The first time I personally heard about Cozy Blanket was January of this year. And finally, after a couple of months of waiting, it's finally here. For those who might not know, Cozy Blanket is a retopology tool for the iPad. With it, we can create low-res meshes out of high-density objects. This is an important step in the 3D modeling process, especially if we have to deal with geometry coming out of sculpt or scanned assets. Before Cozy Blanket, this was a process reserved for a desktop computer, but now we can do all that on the go with just our iPad. Let's have a closer look. I've only had a couple of days with the app, so these are just my initial impressions. But before I tell you what I think about the app, let's first see how it works. The app relies heavily on gestures. For example, we can easily add a polygon just by drawing a rectangular form on the surface of the object. The software figures out the placement, ensures that it follows the underlying geometry, and of course, attaches it to any mesh that might be around it. But we don't have to draw polygons one by one. We can also draw bigger segments. The app will fill in the section in order to maintain the correct flow. Double tapping on a point will let us move it wherever we want using the geometry underneath as a guide. So let's move all of this section further down. And now we can further define the area by adding some more loops. We can do that by swiping with the pencil on one of the polygon's edges. And just like that, we have the mesh we need. If we have to delete a polygon, there's a gesture for that as well. By drawing an X shape, the polygon is now gone. There's several more of these commands. For example, moving a loop around. It's the same as the one we used for points, so we just have to double tap on an edge and then we can move it around. Joining two points together can be achieved by swiping left and right or top to bottom between them. But the app doesn't work exclusively with gestures. We also have some interface elements right on the screen. The relax command, for example, readjusts the polygons and ensures a much nicer distribution and polygon size. The move command also helps a lot when trying to make bigger adjustments to the mesh. And finally, at the bottom left, we have all the other important information like the polygon and triangle count. As you can see, it's a well thought out application. And most importantly, an application you can learn in a matter of minutes. You don't have to spend hours upon hours learning about it. You can just immediately jump in and start working on your project. There was a lot of hype surrounding the app and you can see why. It demos really well, it feels intuitive, and it covers a segment of the 3D market that hasn't been touched before, at least when it comes to the tablet market. But even on a computer, there's no other app that feels as fluid as this one. So that's really good. And I'm sure you can already guess what's coming next. But. As good as the app might be, it's still a version 1 product, so there are still areas that are rough around the edges. Don't get me wrong, I would be incredibly proud if I had released an app like this one, and the team should feel proud about their product, there's no denying that. It's just that I expected a little bit more out of the app. It could very well be because I had incredibly high expectations, but yeah, things can be a little bit weird in some cases not only on the workflow side, but also on the lack of polish on some of the features. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start with some workflow things first. One of the gestures I feel is incredibly tedious and it got to be annoying super fast was the double tab behavior to move a point. When you're working on a mesh, moving points around is part of the process. It's something you will do countless times. So having to constantly double tap every time a point needs to move around is extremely annoying. The same behavior is used to move loops around, but there it's not as annoying because it's not something you will do as often. When it comes to moving points around, I think a better interaction is needed. Another thing I found a little bit annoying is the fact that we cannot quickly populate an area with polygons. For example, let's take this area of the foot. It would have been nice if we could draw the area that we want to populate with polygons and then have the system fill it out. 
The software could decide the number of polygons needed in order to best fit the underlying mesh. Then, with a double tap or some other interaction, we could change the number of polygons to a lower or higher number. That would have saved a ton of time and it would make retopology an even faster process. Instead, we have to draw quite a few polygons before the area is defined. Here, it might not look like a lot of work, but imagine a more complex model. If we have to repeat this process in every complex area of the object, it's going to take a while. Which brings me to the next time-consuming workflow. Currently, I don't know how we can delete bigger sections of our mesh. There might be a way, but I didn't find it yet. So if there isn't one, it means that every time we want to delete an area, we have to do one of the following things. The first one would be to use the X gesture multiple times polygon by polygon. Another way would be to join loops together, but it still takes a long time and it also has its own quirks. For example, we cannot delete the end loop. We have to delete the in-between ones first and then move the end loop to where we want it to be. Which means that to do that, we either have to use the tedious double tap method or we have to join the points together, which is equally tedious. No matter what way you choose to delete the polygons, it will take some time. It would be nice if we could use a lasso tool to make bigger selections. It would have made the process much faster and would have allowed for more localized adjustments like relaxing polygons of a specific area. Workflow aside, I've also had a couple of annoying bugs. For example, the screen going completely blank. It would always come back after a second or two, but there were occasions where this blackout happened repeatedly. Another issue I had has to do with the polygon creation. At times, my polygon gestures weren't registering at all. Probably some issue with the projection of the created polygon. I don't know exactly what the reason is, but usually things worked after slightly rotating the camera around. But bugs can be fixed, and I'm sure they will in future updates. And one of the things that definitely need fixing, and quite urgently, has to do with the undo-redo system. On the iPad, undo and redo is relatively consistent throughout all apps. Tapping on the screen with two fingers triggers an undo, while tapping with three triggers a redo. But here's the strange thing with Cozy Blanket. It kind of follows the same logic, but not all the way through. So, Tapping with two fingers works as expected. We roll back whatever action we did. For whatever reason though, the three tap gesture doesn't work at all. It just ignores the third finger and acts as an undo. As a matter of fact, I don't really know how we can redo. There must be a way, but I haven't found it out yet. I want to believe that I'm either not doing it right, which I find quite hard to believe, or that I'm missing some other obvious gesture. I just don't want to accept that we don't have the ability to redo. Either way, even if redo does work, I found that the undo functionality is quite limited. I could only go back 7 or 8 steps, and that's it. That was quite surprising, but maybe it has to do with the limited memory of my iPad, I'm not exactly sure, but there are definitely other 3D programs on the iPad that can undo for more than 8 steps. So I don't know exactly what's going on there. Keyboard functionality and universal control is also not available, but hopefully that will be added soon. Despite those issues, I don't want to discourage you using the app. I really like what the team has achieved so far. You just need to be aware that things will be a little bit wonky. It's a version 1 product, so we should cut them some slack. No matter what though, it's really refreshing to see a new approach on topology and an app that wants to bring professional workflows on a tablet. Cozy Blanket is really close to being an awesome tool, but there's still some room to grow. I think at this point we also need to talk about the price. Cozy Blanket costs 90 euros and I have the feeling that at this point in the program's development, this price point will hinder its adoption. The amount of money asked is fair, especially considering that it's a one-time fee and there are no subscriptions involved. But once we reach this price point, people won't just impulse buy the app. They will want to thoroughly test it out, and unfortunately the demo app has very tight restrictions, making things very difficult to evaluate. For example, I tried importing a high resolution mesh to see how things would work with my own objects, but that's not 
possible. In demo mode, there's a hard limit of 45,000 vertices, so it's not really easy to see how well this app will perform with more complex projects. Is it easy to retope one more demanding object? There's no way to know. With this hard limit, we're restricted to simple models like the demo frog, which is not really the best way to stress test an app like this one. But even if we could import a more detailed object, saving is also completely disabled. So there's no way for us to work on an object in multiple sessions. Every time we open the app, we have to start from zero. On top of that, exporting is completely disabled as well. So there's no way for us to also test out the whole workflow from beginning to end. The way the demo is structured demands a lot from the user. We need to trust that the things we cannot test work as expected. We need to trust that the workflow will be okay in complex objects. And also we need to trust that the development will continue in the future. If the demo was a bit more relaxed and there was the possibility to test out one or two projects, then it would have been a much easier sell. But the way the app is set up is going to make people very hesitant. I, for example, haven't bought the app yet, and I'm one of the users who have spent this type of money before on other iOS apps. But in those cases, the demos weren't as restrictive. I probably will purchase Cozy Blanket because I want to support the development of these types of uh, tools for the iPad. But yeah, you cannot expect that from everyone. The team behind the app needs to seriously rethink the whole demo part of the product. Especially when we take into account that tools like ZBrush already offer very robust retopo options, which opens up a whole new discussion about the utility of manual retopology tools like Cozy Blanket. Is anyone ever going to retopo a model by hand, especially if that model is insanely detailed? I'm not entirely convinced. So that makes Cozy Blanket an even more difficult sell. Anyway, whatever the case may be, I highly encourage you to test out the app. It's available in the App Store, and I think it runs on most iPads. It's definitely worth trying out, and I think efforts like this one should be rewarded. Otherwise, the insane processing power of the iPad will be wasted on simple applications. But of course, the decision is up to you. Let me know what you think about the app in the comments below, and if you have already tested it out, I would love to hear your first impressions. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.